Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another oscilloscope. This one is from Tech. It's called Model T03. It's a one channel oscilloscope and it is tube based. So it's from 1960 something. And it isn't really full of uh, features or a lot of stuff like that. But I heard that it is not working. So I'm sorry, I need to open this first. I can't do any kind of power up or test anything at all. I need to open it and then slowly power it up and see if I can figure out uh, what is wrong with this thing. It's going to be a little bit funny to see what happens really now we're inside and I'm doing my first little ex inspection around I actually also find the switches on the sides uh, there is of course a hole in the side of the cabinet so you can access the switches here and that's actually for deflection where you can select a direct deflection going out here on the front vertical direct and horizontal direct so there is a switch for vertical direct or via the amplifiers made by tubes six tubes here for all the amplifier oscillators and all that kind of stuff six tubes huh but the CRT counts also for a tube, right? And see, oh, that's the other switch. Vertical and horizontal, direct or via amp. And then what else do we find? Two more tubes. That one is, of course, the high voltage rectifier tube. And that is the low voltage rectifier tube. So that will be nine tubes in total. And that is what we see. I wonder what is the problem. <laughs> Look at that beautiful PCB layout, huh? I actually did a little inspection here before. And I can tell you I've already seen a huge problem. The six tubes here, they're doing a, a lot of amplification and the oscillator and all that kind of stuff, right? Look at those two wires. That is filament voltage. So filament for this tube and then it goes on to that tube and to that tube and to that tube and to that tube in the middle. You see the problem here? The filament to that tube here is connected that way and that way and it's actually quite high current so what have you got here you have a magnetic loop where all the current to that one tube is making a loop covering the entire area of everything here i mean this is a catastrophe you need to have both these wires on both of the tubes in parallel so the loop area here is very very small this is the worst you could have done. Just removing this wire here and putting it over to that side. Or remove that one, put it over to that side. That is, of course, how it was intended to be done. Then you don't have this big, big loop area. And I would, of course, have twisted the wires here for the filament. But let's have a look when I get this up and running. and Or if... I ever get this up and running and um, I'm not promising anything so far let's see if there is any hum or any funny funny stuff to see oh I, there's actually one more thing I want to show you before we go in power up and debug mode this one is also something I I saw let's get a little bit of light here what do you think about the safety distance here I mean, I can see it's not touching. 
You know what I mean? This point. That is a little bit too close. So this I will have to fix. This can't be good. And of course I'm gonna go through everything like that and see if I can find all the small details. Oh. It's actually quite beautiful. It reminds me a little bit about a heat kit. The same kind of very, very thin, flimsy metal and the way that it looks with all the wiring and all that kind of stuff. This is a, <laughs> I mean, close to a heat kit clone. Why, yeah, <laughs> that is, I, I bet you can see that as well, right? I think we are ready to power up and see if there is any kaboom left in this thing. Mains is applied and nothing bad happened. I am ready to turn this off. 50 watts, 30, 25 watts. I mean, this sounds... And then it goes up to 40, 60, 70 watts. Yes, because stuff is getting warm. Let's get a lot of intensity here. Well, I don't see any... Oi! Look at that! What have we got here? That is focus. Focus is in the middle. That is good. Horizontal is also good. I mean, what are we crying about? This thing is actually working. Oh, well, so far... Not too bad. Yeah. Look at that. Ha ha. This is one kilo sign. And I figured out how this works. Ooh. We got a little bit of loose connections. Of course, it's noise in all the pots. Let's get a little bit more. No, that is full. The more I work the knobs, the more it seems to be working. Ooh, yeah. The funniest is the delay. <laughs> See? We got a lot of... Okay, that is focus. The trigger here is... They call this sync face. And then you can go... Zoom in like this, and then this is... Positive. And then it will be negative, so... Look at that. I think all we need to do is to clean the contacts. And here's a loose screw. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Contact. I don't know if you can see this, but we've definitely got some funky contact here. The picture here is a little bit dim, I must say, and I don't know if if it's me, but I think it's getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. That can't be a good sign. There's almost nothing left now. Uh, let's measure the high voltage. So yes, let's look a little bit on the schematic diagram. Um, the fault here is definitely uh, the picture gets dimmer and dimmer until it's just completely unvisible anymore. So, uh, and that is um, when it gets warmer and warmer uh, somehow. So, here is the schematic uh, from Radio Museum. So, remember to say thank you to uh, those guys for the nice schematic. And uh, what is it on this schematic? 
that is uh, that has the ability to change the intensity of the of the CRT or of the beam. So I'm looking at the at the bottom right part where we got intensity, we got focus, and we got the high voltage uh, that is a thousand volts, and we got a three hundred volts. And uh, if you see the different uh, trimmers for intensity and for focus, then it goes into a tube. And then there is a capacitor, 0 0.2 microfarad, that is connected to the um, uh, anode of uh, that tube, more or less, right? I've already checked uh, the, the 300 volt um, on the two capacitors there, the 40 and the 20 uh, microfarad, and that seems to be quite stable. So I think I'm gonna go and hunt down this 0.2 um, capacitor here because if you go all the way to the right, uh, you see the high voltage rectifier tube. Uh, I also got about 900 volts on those two capacitors and that didn't seem to be um, uh, the problem. And also if you go uh, up to the CRT, you see a, a modulation input. Um, there is also a capacitor here and uh, but that the other the right side of that capacitor is five mega ohms, so I mean, and then a hundred kilo ohms uh, on the left side. So that means leakage on that point can't really be the problem. So it cannot be that capacitor. But then we go up again and find another trimmer uh, from the three hundred volts uh, that is controlling some of the grids in the CRT and those grids will of course also set the current in the CRT and therefore also the um, the current and brightness and all that kind of stuff right so there is also a capacitor here I need to investigate see I made a nice little drawing here of the six tubes and this is uh, seen from the top uh, from the tube side by the way and this will help you navigate your way around this uh, unit. So that means V1 is that one down there, right? So that means this tube here is V6, that one. And V6 is that one. I have been poking around with the, diff the, the most easy things first. Uh, that voltage is plus 270 always. It's not affected by anything going warm or cold. And the anode supply is perfectly fine. Uh, also that is perfectly fine. The high voltage perfectly fine. So if you look at the cathode, that is of course connected to the brightness pot meter, it also goes to the blanking tube. So that tube is connected to the sweep and uh, this capacitor here is directly connected to the to the 270 volt and to the cathode and that means if there's any leak in this capacitor when it gets warm you're going to uh, to have exactly this problem but see here is there's a little um, little tricky trick here this capacitor is 0 0.02, 1500 volts, and that capacitor up here is also the same, right? <laughs> so at the beginning, I was tricked to believe it was that one, but I did, of course, follow the circuit a little bit around, and then I see here is a 100 kilo ohm res uh, resistor to, to the high voltage. And then we got some wires to different things, right? And the only place I see that is here. So that means this is the modulation input. So, and I, I don't believe that is the problem. Unless this side here is shorted, I mean, nah, it, it cannot be that, right? We're looking for that capacitor here. I don't know if you can see it, maybe not from that side. This is a V6, it is down here. Yes, here we go. So here is our 0 0.02 1500 volt capacitor. So that is the the one. And it is, of course, 
in between two tubes and all those power resistors and stuff. So here, I don't have any more um, cool spray. So here's my, my idea. I'm, I'm going to pour a few drops of uh, alcohol on this capacitor. <laughs> I'm going to warm this up and see too that it's actually working. And then I'm going to put in a few drops of alcohol because that thing is, uh, is, uh, is uh, not conductive. So it shouldn't cause any problems. But then it will cool down this capacitor. And then we're probably going to see the picture coming back on. I left the scope running for a few minutes and I think it is about to happen now. Um, you can see the picture is getting dimmer and dimmer. And I got a tiny drop of 99% uh, uh, alcohol here. It is room temperature, this alcohol, so if I don't see anything I will try and put it in the freezer. And then we'll see. I don't know if you can still, still see the the picture here. Now we'll try and do a little bit of drop drop. Are we getting any picture back? No, we don't get a picture back. In fact, it turned off a lot more. That is weird. I didn't expect that to happen. We'll go and put some alcohol in the freezer. Hmm. I heard one of the resistors going like, Psh. so there's a very, very warm resistor in there. I need to check that out as well. So this scope was on now for like 10 minutes <laughs> and we still got a nice and shiny picture. I removed this capacitor. And it is definitely the the blanking capacitor from this uh, blanking tube that is doing this. But what do you know? The soft tooth generator and its flyback speed is really, really fast. I don't know if you are able to see this. If I move it here, maybe you can see a tiny, tiny little line here. So this is the, f yes, you can see it now, right? So there is actually a line that goes back to the start, but that is so, so fast, it's almost invisible. So you almost don't need this blanking. But of course, if I go um, with a faster sweep and a faster input, maybe we're gonna see this a little bit more. This is one kilohertz. This is 500 kilohertz. And now we see the flyback a lot more visible. Uh, it's actually able to trick uh, more than one kilohertz, uh, one megahertz, but the uh, bandwidth gets visible. It's this is definitely only a half a megahertz uh, scope. Um, it's actually set here, 300 kilohertz or kilo cycles. So I guess this is uh, would be the maximum official frequency. Let's try and give it 300. See? Yeah, now we see the flyback. So we definitely need a another blanking capacitor. I couldn't really find a 20 nano uh, that's able to handle the high voltage, but this is 10 nano, 2 kilovolt. Let's see how that works. <laughs> see, I think I solved it most of the way. But there's still a little bit of blanking here. This is five, uh, 300 kilohertz input. So, of course, at any lower uh, sweeps, uh, full speed here, right? You're not going to see this at all. But, of course, the capacitor should have been 20. And then it would have been blanked completely. So I think I will call it a day and uh, say thank you very much for watching. It was fun, as always, to repair good old stuff. I forgot to mention a little detail about uh, brightness. It is actually a little bit um, dim. And this is, I cranked it all the way up, right? And the reason for it to be dim is the anode voltage is a little bit uh, low. 
well, in this case, it, it's cats or waltzes, but that's a whole different thing anyway. But here is a modification. This is not me. I didn't write this. So this is from the schematic um, from Radio Museum. And they recommend you to change, of course, this uh, rectifier and that one as well. This will increase the voltage and this will also make it more bright. 